we need to look at the the ruling from Judge McAfee. This is a Fulton County judge. The ruling he made on the Fonnie Willis Nathan Wade disqualification, and the reason it's important, and you'll see why it's important here. All right. Now, while formally undefined in Georgia precedent, an appearance of impropriety is generally considered conduct or status that will lead a reasonable person to think that the actor is behaving or will be inclined to behave inappropriately or wrongfully. This judge wrote that, and he cited the Black's Law Dictionary, right? Let's keep reading. Borrowing from federal judicial recusal standards, a reasonable person is an uninformed member of the public with only a passing knowledge of the facts at hand. See Cheney versus United States District Court. Okay, here we go. Let's keep going. This must be the standard as otherwise, in this case, a casual, uninformed, misinformed observer might believe the district attorney must recuse herself merely because her father shares a last name with the co-defendant. Nor, a, nor is a reasonable person hypersensitive or unduly suspicious without an understanding of the relevant legal standards and judicial practice. Now, essentially, what McAfee is saying, and he's citing law and definitions, he's saying that the, uh, what a reasonable person is pretty much an informed member of the public, somebody who knows what's going on. He even goes on to say here, uh, the appearance standard recognizes that even when no actual conflict exists, a perceived conflict in the reasonable eyes of the public, in the reasonable eyes of the public, threatens confidence in the legal system itself. When the danger, uh, when this danger goes uncorrected, it undermines the legitimacy and moral force of our already weakest branch of government. Right. So, reasonable eyes of the public. Keep like you got to remember that part right there. Reasonable eyes of the public. That's that's the important part of when we when we talk about whether or not the judge will actually broke a rule or whether the judge, you know, did anything actually wrong or anything like that. The way that these rules are written and when it comes to judicial conduct and the pro conduct of prosecutors and things like that, they don't actually have to do anything wrong. The appearance of any impropriety that might reason that might uh, cause doubt in the mind of reasonable people of the public is enough to be disqualified. You do not actually have to have uh, committed a crime. You don't have to have violated any rules. If people observing and know what's going on and they see and they feel like something might be wrong with, with and they might not trust the way that this case is going, that's enough to be disqualified. That's for a judge and that's for prosecutors right in this case specifically they were dealing with prosecutors but i just wanted to make sure that we understood why when some people look at this case and they say why should glanville be recused or why should one of these prosecutors be disqualified it's not it's not a matter of saying oh we just want to stand up for young thug and we just want to defend criminals and we just care to take the side of the criminals no when we're talking about due process and we're talking about fair trials and things like that the appearance of impropriety is is introduced into this case when a judge is having an ex parte meeting with the state and they're having a meeting with uh, without letting the defense know. And then they have a star witness in there. Another thing that I want to point out real quick before we move on. Let me see if I highlight. OK. OK, here we go. Another piece before I even uh, move on to this next part that that I don't think that um, the defense I don't know how the defense missed this. Thus, it is sometimes an attorney guiltless in any actual sense, nevertheless, is required to stand aside for the sake of public confidence in the probity of the administration of justice. Love v. State. Now, look, you, you see this part here. Guiltless in any actual sense. That means even if you did not do anything wrong, you should still step aside for the sake of public confidence in the probity of the administration of justice, right? So the judge himself, once he realized, oh, they think I did something wrong, let me step to the side so this case can continue uh, and the public can trust the, the direction it's going to go, right? The fact that he didn't step aside means he is undermining this case law that has been brought up by McAfee uh, within the last few months. Uh, so now... That's one part, right? This is, let me, let me pull this up. So I run into this thing called, 
Okay, Georgia, uh, Georgia Code of Conduct 3.5, right? Now, this deals with Rule uh, 3.5 is the impartiality and decorum of the tribunal. The tribunal is the judge, pretty much, right? Now, stay with me real quick, y'all. I'm sorry we got to get real sciencey, uh, law, legal, whatever, you know, legalese. We got to get real legal on the, on the track, right? Impartiality and decorum of the tribunal. So this is talking about the judge in this situation. A lawyer shall not, without regard to whether the lawyer represents a client in the matter, seek to influence a judge, juror, or prospective juror, or other official by means of prohibited, uh, other means prohibited by law. B, communicate ex parte with such a person, except as permitted by law. Communicate with the juror or prospective juror after discharge of the jury, if the communicate these other things. Engage in conduct intended to disrupt a tribunal. And then they have these penalties. Now, under the comment section, if we look here at section two, if we are to maintain the integrity of the judicial process, it is imperative that the, that an advocate's function be limited to the presentation of evidence and argument to allow a cause to be decided according to law. The exertion of improper influence is detrimental to that pro process. Regardless of an advocate's innocent intention, Actions which give the appearance of tampering with judicial impartiality are to be avoided. The activity prescribed by this rule should be observed by the advocate in such a careful manner that there be no appearance of impropriety. Are y'all, uh, is that, was that, should I read it again? I should read the key parts again. I read the key parts again. Now, the exertion of improper influence is detrimental to that process. Regardless of an advocate's innocent intention, actions which give the appearance of tampering with judicial impartiality are to be avoided. The activity prescribed by this rule should be observed by the advocate in such a manner that there is no appearance of impropriety. Now, what I was shocked by is the fact that none of when, when reading through all the motions that they were that were filed against judge glanville in his white cell rico case none of them mentioned this one they talked about conduct they talked about different rules you know 3.9 i mean uh, 2.9 2.11 all that but none of them mentioned 3.5 impartiality and decorum i wonder why none of them mentioned this i mean it should tap in with me i'm not a lawyer or anything like that but why didn't they use this because um, even Weinstein did mention, uh, or I don't think it was Weinstein, it was one of Kendrick's other lawyers, one of Yak Gotti's other lawyers. They brought up the uh, appearance of impropriety. So why not go to this? Because this speaks directly to what happened. Pretty much a prosecutor brought the judge in and made the judge look biased. You know what I'm saying? So that's the actions of, once again, dirty tactics. That's like putting a person on the stand and knowing that they're going to plead the fifth. So I want y'all to, you know, check out, check out rule uh, or, uh, you know, rule 3.5 and see if y'all are looking at the same thing I'm looking at. Essentially, the prosecution, you know, brought the judge in and now makes the judge look biased and uh, impartial. I mean, he looks partial to one side, especially the fact that he didn't report that meeting to these people without being questioned by Brian Steele. Even when he was questioned, he still didn't want to report it. He pretty much said, Brian Steele, how do you know about that? Uh, so. That is, I did, I did want to get that out there to the people and let y'all know that there are more rules and statutes that can be used that they haven't even tapped into yet.